Ron Espino, welcome to Australian Musician. Thank you very much, Greg. Lovely to talk with you. Well, we're talking to you because um, The Superstitions, your band, uh, is about to release uh, your fourth album. With, with the album coming out, how do you feel about it? Where does it sit uh, against the other album? Well, uh, mixed feelings, I guess, you know, sigh of relief, uh, you know, much happiness, uh, you know, very satisfied with the with the end result. It's a it's a lovely album, and it, it is album number four. We've we've amazed ourselves. We didn't think we'd get to album number four, really, you know. Uh, but it's good that we have, and uh, and I think the end result is quite wonderful. And and uh, we're, we're, each of the band is is very proud of it and and love it immensely. And uh, there are only seven tracks. We we tried for an eighth track. But it's one of those tracks where I just couldn't get it. I, I tried everything mel melody wise and vocal wise and everything to to make it work, but I just couldn't work. And it kept reminding me of a, a Died Pretty song. And it was like, I couldn't get it out of my head. And Cam said, how about we just put it on the back burner and we release seven songs. And there was a toing and froing of, it's only seven songs though. Most bands have like 10 and there was that sort of conversation. and. I think it's nice to, to release the seven definite tracks where the, it's only seven, but there's seven powerful tracks. You know, each of the seven the songs are, are powerful and, and there's not a track that I can go, oh, I wish that wasn't on or, or we, could, we could have left that off or something. It's just seven definite gorgeous tracks and it's, it's about 35 minutes or something. So it's not over, it doesn't outstay its welcome. So we, you put it on, you play it, you're taken on a journey, this beautiful journey, uh, and then it ends, and then you're left sort of suspended in this wonderful world. Um, well, the wonderful superstitions world. <laughs> and so we're very pleased. Yeah. yeah, so you should be. Uh, when you first uh, put this band together, what, what was the vision? Uh, no particular vision, I don't think. Uh, Greg, I just met Cam out socially one night in here in Melbourne and uh, uh, was introduced um, to him and uh, obviously he knew I, who I was, you know, through Died Pretty and stuff. Uh, and uh, I'd heard of his band Silver Ray, so it was like, we should do something together. I'm not doing anything. I think I was doing something with Kim, the Darling Downs, um, Kim Salmon, and um, I think, or well, maybe that had... Anyhow, I wanted to do something else, so um, get back into the rock scene. He was into, we, we met out one night through a mutual friend and um, I just rang him up. I, he gave me his number and I rang him up a little while, yeah, a couple of week or so later And because I had some songs that I, um, I thought would be suitable to be for a singer. I had some sort of songs that would be suitable for vocals. I was sort of getting away. Just I wanted to go down a little, that path a little bit. And we, we didn't have any idea about a band or anything. And then we just sort of, um, I went around with my little my laptop and the microphone and we just started working. And we clicked like immediately. We, we had, a, he had some great ideas. And I think we realised that we had, we went, once we had a, I can't, Jesus, so long ago, I can't hardly remember. But I, I realised well, as soon as we had a few songs, we thought, yeah, let's just be good for a band. There was no great vision. It was just doing, wanting to sort of, you know, I guess you know, maybe I missed Died Pretty and playing with Died Pretty. So, you know, I needed to, a band thing maybe. So, because uh, in the Darling Downs, it was just Kim and I, so maybe I wanted to get back to a band thing. And, uh, and, and, and I love collaborating with people. So, you know, collaborating with somebody different and we, we both had the same sort of ideas, you know, that sort of like lots of 60s sort of stuff, influences like Scott Walker and, and the Walker Brothers and, and, you know, things like that. Um, so just sort of, we just sort of, yeah. That's how it sort of started. And we just continued on and then started playing um, and found that uh, it was fun playing. And obviously, with the, with the, it's, a, it's a wonderful band. We have Tim and, and Andy on bass and, and uh, Mark on drums. So they all came from different sort of areas and bands and stuff. And we all uh, sort of got on well and, and we continue to get on well. And so it's, it's, it's you know, a five-member thing. But we all contribute musically and, you know, even though my name's stuck out the front, I did try just to, can we just try the somethings? Not, don't, don't put my name there. 
but I was outvoted that, uh, you know, it should be Ron S. Pino and the superstition. I was like, no, can we just have the superstitions? You don't want my old name there, but, um, yeah. you know, it, it's fine. <laughs> you learn to live with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have to ask you, uh, how's your health? Because there was a period there over the last couple of years where everyone was very worried about you. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I went, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, was you know visited by the C word, and uh, in 2019. So we started work on this album about the beginning of 2018. I think we started to form ideas and song ideas, and maybe maybe at the end of 2017, even it's it's quite it was quite a long it's been a quite a long process, quite a, sort of at times quite drawn out, where we 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 would start on it and then stop, and we had to stop in the start of 2019, uh, because as I said, I got visited by the C word, which was you know uh, I had esophageal cancer. I was uh, diagnosed with esophageal cancer in early 2019, so things had to stop immediately, including my drinking and smoking. <laughs> so that's been for like three years now, which is, I should have done it 40 years ago, but anyhow, um, <laughs> it'll take cancer to make you stop drinking and smoking. But um, so, so you know, most of 2019 was lot visits to hospitals, lots of uh, radio, radiotherapy, lots of um, the other chemotherapy, uh, lots of visits, visits to St Vincent's Hospital here in Melbourne. So uh, to the wonderful doctors and everything that, you know, hospital people, wonderful. Uh, so lots of um, scans. Uh, they finally operated in the middle of uh, 2019 and got it out, uh, got the, removed it and sort of, yeah, got the cancer up, the esophagus esophag and... Um, yeah, so that was just uh, lots of, um, and I had lots of support, et cetera, throughout 2019. So that put a uh, stop on the uh, any recording or any, so it gave me time to sort of wrestle up some, well, I had I had demos of the songs for the album, so it gave me time to sort of um, uh, think of lyrics and song titles and album titles and album designs and stuff like that. So nothing sort of stopped, for, you know, uh, and, it was a six and a half hour operation to get this thing out. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I just kept writing and, uh, you know, and then it was like, yeah, all systems ahead, you know, it's all gone and it's gone. And uh, and then 2020 happened. It was like, oh God, another C word. So has ended there. So it was COVID this time. So it's like, uh, so it, 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 it uh, put the brakes on again for 2020 for us to do anything so because you've been living a, a healthier life uh i believe yeah. your, your, your voice uh has changed perhaps somewhat how, how have you it certainly has uh, how have you utilized <laughs> have you approached your vocals in the studio um have you been more adventurous? Well, yeah well because I've, I've got given these filthy habits away uh you know it's uh, it's improved touch wood uh, my uh, you know my vocal has changed and and for the better it's become a lot stronger um and uh, with the whole cancer thing I, I did the right thing and you know it could have been a much tragic sort of story uh had i not done the right thing but i've done, been doing the right thing for the last couple of years so. yeah, yeah I, I think these ranges increased a little bit the different timbre more of a kind of a stronger uh, projection and the the, the tone is richer, yeah, timbre is richer, I think. And yeah, he's, he's got a little bit more, a couple, you know, a little bit higher range, a little bit lower range. It's it, yeah, it's an amazing, miraculous transformation actually. But I think it just goes to show that Ron is just an incredible singer. It, you know, within him, he is a fantastic singer. Yeah, my voice became stronger. I did a lot, all of the vocals. Uh, just Cam and I did the vocal. Uh, vocals at his place actually we did the vocal uh, we did the, the the drums and bass the rhythm tracks we did in the studio uh at our friend's uh sound park studio yep. uh, here in melbourne and, and in 2018 i think they were done so we had those and but uh i did a lot of the vocals so sort of towards the end of 2019 
Oh, so 2020, I did a lot, not 2019, 2020, I started doing the vocals when we were in and out of lockdowns, these things called lockdowns and all these new words entered our lives um, in 2020 that we're now still living with. And uh, so when I had the chance to go to Cairns, um, I'd go over there, was taken over there and it was just him and I, and we'd do the vocals lots of the vocals, just him and I. And then I I concentrated a lot on the vocals this time because in the past I've been very nonchalant about the vocals and, oh, that sort of that'll do attitude. Oh, that's fine. I don't need to do it again. This time I was actually changing lyrics, changing the way I sang things, changing words that I'd hear back on a, on one of the vocal takes and go, eh, that doesn't sound good. I'll change these these lyrics and stuff to something else. So I was actually taking a lot more um, interest <laughs> in the in the actual vocals because um, everything, the music and everything, the, the rhythm tracks and that all was superb because they're wonderful guys to work with. You know, they're incredible musicians that know their stuff, you know, so they get it done very quickly. So I needed to step up and make sure that, that my vocals were just on the same level as the music happening around me that I wasn't going like, well, put the vocals back in the mix, you know, it's, it's, no, put them out and proud. And, and and I think the end result speaks for itself, actually. It's a, it's a lovely record and I'm really proud of it. It's called Do the Understanding. Can you explain the album title? <laughs> Again, another, uh, another uh, when I was uh, getting ready for operations and, and doing scans on my, on my body and stuff for the cancer, uh, I was just sitting on the lounge and I, it just came to me. Some, some, I don't know, it just came to me, Do the Understanding. I went, oh, that's the album title. I'll call it Do the Understanding. And and uh, I, 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 kind of, I kind of associated it with, I, I can't understand, because other people had cancer and they were going, you know, dying and stuff. And it was, and it was, uh, they were much more difficult circumstances than mine and much more life or death circumstances that I couldn't understand. And so I sort of was going, well, I can't understand it. You do the understanding. So it was sort of like that, that I sort of came about, but it just, the actual phrase just came to me, do the understanding. And, uh, and I thought maybe we could even make a dance out of it. You know, <laughs> Come on, everybody do the understanding. So we, we may have a dance out of it also. The track Love Light is musically quite sparse, but there's a lot of feeling in it. When you wrote that song, were you hearing the way it came out? Yeah, just a very beautiful, very fragile sort of song. So I gave it a really fragile melody and, and fragile sort of lyrics, just just romantic sort of lyrics, you know, about two people, but, you know, I don't sort of dwell on lyrics and stuff. They just come out, you know. I'm, I'm never, I've never referred to myself as a, a lyricist, even though people say it's a, a good lyric. I'm not a lyricist. So they just come out and I will pick lines that come out and write them down and I will just, uh, it'll go through a, uh, you know, a process of picking and choosing various lines. And like uh, Love Light was like that. All the songs are like that, actually. I just, I just, which with, with the cancer and the COVID and that gave me plenty of time to do the lyrics. I had plenty of time to, to and, and, and something like um, uh, When Worlds Collide, that was, the, that was the most challenging, that song for me, lyrically, because I had to get some sort of, because I'm an old school songwriter. So I, I, I'm old school as in great, great melody for a, a, a verse and a, and a chorus. You've got to have that big chorus. You know, there's nothing like a great chorus in a song. So I tried to have do that with with uh, When Worlds Collide. So it took me ages to sort of grab onto something. And I came up with, don't make this all out of mine. Don't make this all out. Don't make this out. So that was the sort of kind of a chorusy thing that I kept going back to. But that took a long time. <laughs> and I kept throwing lines out and going, no, that sounds crap. And but and. The Love Light was a little simpler. It's a very simple, just a very simple little, I call it sort of an interlude on the album, you know. You know, mm. let's get, do ourselves tonight in, you know, let's in faraway glances. There's about two couple, a couple meeting out 
or from across the room, that old sort of thing, you know. Because the music, it, it, the music is very the music for that song is very romantic and very fragile. It just it just reminded me of two people just seeing each other or something, you yeah. know, from across a room or something, or or just passing or something cliched like that. But it was very it was very nice to write for, yeah. and it only goes for a minute and a half or so. so it wasn't overly taxing. <laughs> Um, I noticed with the superstitions music, uh, although there's a lot going on, there's always a good amount of space for you to sing through. How important is, or how important a tool is space in music for you? It's 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 very important. Uh, the superstitions are one of the because we'll take these songs that we've done, and they'll be different again when we perform them live. There's going to be a hell of a lot of space there. Or there's going to be space there when we. They, I've told the guys that they, these songs are going to be different to what we what we recorded for the album. They're going to be different versions for the album. There's going to be a hell of a lot of space for the in, in these new songs, and there is there has been in in the past songs where we where we're a jammy sort of band. You know what I mean? We we love to to to. And that's why Cam and I formed the duo thing to enable us to. Get, get another uh, side of the superstition song so we, we could go out as a duo and do and Cam has his loops and pedals and stuff and I just do the vocal and we just, it's a very loose free form jazzy almost jazzy sort of thing when the two of us get together so the superstitions have allowed us to do that as a duo so that we've always got that and we will do that with these new songs as a duo and 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 this and with these uh, New songs, as with the older songs, they will change again in in in, in a live atmosphere. So they will be they'll they'll be extended. You know, there'll be different melodies. That I will think of something a, a different melody in the song that may go for another five minutes. We like taking I like taking audiences on a journey. Basically, as cliched as that sounds, but it's very important to to come be have a lot of heart and soul in the music. There's so much crap music around these days that we've always maintained cam and i've always maintained got to have lots of heart and soul in the songs otherwise it's very fake and it's not it's just like uh, that's crap you've got to have heart and you've got to really mean it so when we go out there live it's just got to come from the heart and 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 we've got to play with a lot of heart and soul and a lot of passion and and you know and and just just go out there you know and and just take people on a journey as I said, as cliched as that sounds, we like doing that where you, you touch people emotionally, where you take them to the highest point you can and just leave them hanging there, you know, and, and just totally exhausted just with emotion, not from dancing, even though that's they can dance, but just with um, emotionally, that's a very difficult thing to do, I think. I played my Les Paul and my acoustic, uh, my kind of 11-string Maton, yeah. Oh, and a little couple of samples and things too and, on a, and a, few, yeah, a couple of little things that I'd sampled and stuff. Yeah. Some you, atmosphere. You, you're still using the Blues Deluxe with the Les Paul? I've got a, I've still got, yes, I've used, I, but I haven't, I've finally got another amp, Greg, that I've got a, um, after all these years, I've got a, um, a like a, um, a, a Fender, it's a copy of a, of a 5E3, like a Fender Deluxe from the 50s, one of these sort of, you know, ones that people make from kits. And um, that's a really fantastic amp. I haven't really used it much, I'm only just getting used to it. I had to do a few mods and things. I didn't really use that much on this record, though, but it's just the, the same blues lux I've had since, like, 1996. <laughs> what did you have on your pedal board in the studio? I've got a Strymon Blue Sky Reverb, um, one of those, and um, I've used my uh, old Marshall Drive Master. I've had that for oh, a year since almost the same length of time as I've had the Blues Deluxe. I kind of just use that for really, it's really not, it's got a really nasty distortion on it, but it's really fantastic for feedback. In my opinion, for it's can for, so I don't know why, but any other pedal that I've used, like distortion pedal for feed, just to create sort of feedback, I've never been able to get the same quality than this thing. Um, it's just it, there's something real, very musical about it. How you can when you, when you position yourself to create that sort of that sort of quality. I've got a um, 
it's a it's a cat what is it called actually i've got it just here but a uh yeah it's a cat a, um a cattle and bread 5f6 okay. you know that, that company they went under yeah. didn't they yeah i think the, the the owner died i think is that what it was yeah right right i've had that for a few years that's a really great distortion pedal got a nice and warm sort of copy of like a basement i suppose um and that's it. Oh, no, that's, yeah, that's it. I don't use anything else. I don't use any other effects. I use a few more live, like a looping pedal, sometimes live. And so, yeah, but other than that, they're the basic sort of ones. Yeah. Uh, you and Mark Dawson have always been into looping. Uh, how much uh, of an element of this album uh, contained looping? We did. I, I did. I, I looped up Mark's drums on a number of a couple of songs. We felt that that was a really good, just to, to that emotional effect of looped drums or something that we thought would, would really suit some of these tracks. We've never done that before. Um, I didn't use any sort of guitar loops or anything, but uh, yeah, we did. We did do. We did loop the drums and the bass on a couple of songs just to give that that effect, you know, like that incessant quality, which I think suited them. Yeah, Love Light was one of those tracks. Uh, yes, actually, that's right. Well, Love Light, Darkness Heart is another one, um, and Everything Has Changed. Actually, those ones, yeah. But yeah, they give that quality. Yeah, Love Light was a little bit more almost electronic. How we like with some of the songs, we actually separated the drums and did them all individually. Um, Love Light was one that we did. We did that on. Um, yeah, some of the other ones we just like. I just loop the whole kit. But um, yeah, Love Light was they, they, we played them separately. Like that, and it was, so, it's kind of like it was like a yeah, sort of a quasi electronic production, I suppose. And it sort of suited it. I think suits the song. Is there a track on the album which is closer to your heart than the others? Um, no, no, I like them all equally. Actually, I think. Well, I, I think it's going to rain that the, the end of the the last track on the album. We, you know, um, I did the track listing for the album, and I wanted that for the last song. So you just taken again on this journey at the end, um, and, and just left hanging there, just sort of drained and and just. Uh, so that's that's a that's a very beautiful song. I think it's going to rain. But then I, I saw Randy Newman had a <laughs> had a song years ago called "I Think It's Going to Rain Today." It's like, ah, oh, damn it, um, which is a very famous song. Kim was telling Kim Sim was telling me about Randy Newman a couple of weeks ago. I didn't think Kim was a Randy Newman fan, but I don't know much about him actually. Uh, I know that's probably horrible, but uh, maybe I should start listening to him. But um, no, I think the album is a whole. It's it's, it's a whole. It's, it's just a little journey for like thirty five minutes or something. Mm -hmm. So there's no one. I kind of like the strangest feeling. That's sort of a wacky, sort of weird. That's the rest of the album is sort of romantic, kind of romantic, or or sort of uh, very emotional. That track isn't. That's that's, that's one of the weird tracks that I, I I came up with this vocal in about ten minutes. That's the song that was a, an old song that we had for seven or eight years or something, or for a long time. That came came and had on Cam and I had, had on the back burner uh, that, that we now called the strangest feeling. And I just came up with this Bowie esque kind of what I thought was a Bowie esque kind of vocal and melody for this uh, for this song. And it was just immediate. We both loved it. And but that was that that was sort of not. That, that that was written kind of loosely on um, a, um, a story from the seventies, from I think about nineteen seventy five or something, about um, this guy that was flying from I think Melbourne to, across Bass Strait to King Island. Oh, I've forgotten his name now because I was going to almost call the song after him, uh, uh, Frederick Valentich. Fre Frederick Valentich was a pilot. And it, it was just a really quirky little story that's always stayed with me uh, about him flying across and he was he was seeing lights and stuff outside the, his plane. And it, it was just a, it's basically a UFO story. He's never been heard of since like 1975. So we don't know what happened in Bass Strait there, flying from King Island back to Melbourne. He just was going, is anyone out, you know, I, they, I had these lights near my plane is anyone do you guys have another plane up here and they're going no no and all of a sudden it was like <sighs> and he was never heard of again so that's basically what i lyrically was about I, and this record i like all of them 
I really like all of them. Um, they all have their own atmosphere. Um, I usually can't listen to anything that I do after I've done it, but I've, I've, I, I, I kind of can listen to this one. Not that I put it on much, but, I, you know, like reviewing it for the vinyl masters and things, and I really like it. It's got a really big set. It's beautifully mastered, I must say. It's got a big sound. Um, I like Worlds Collide, actually, if want, out, of, out of all of them. It's kind of like one of our older sort of, it's a classic superstitions kind of song. It's big and grand and kind of, kind of, kind of it goes, goes places, goes a few different directions. Yeah. Was the track order important? Yes. Yeah, definitely. This time for me, as I said, I, I, I put a lot into to actually, which, you know, it's taken such a long time and hindsight's a wonderful thing. Uh, it's taken for me to actually go, you know, to listen to things like track listings, my actual vocal performance, instead of shrugging it off and going, eh, that'll do, or whatever. You know, and, and, and having other people decide for me because I was too lazy or I wanted to go and have a drink or something or, you know, and wasn't, wouldn't get, I just wanted to perform. So, so listening to the track, we had a, several, a couple of track listings and I listened to one and, uh, and just knew it wasn't it. I was given a track listing and, and, and yeah, I just went, no, this is not the right track listing. And uh, so I went and I, I made the track listing myself. I rearranged it so it's a, it was decided we end the, the album with I think it's going to rain. And uh, yeah, so just just in uh, just in emo an, an emotion and that, just taking going on a journey, even though it's only seven songs, going on a small journey, and then just being held in the like suspended right at the end of the album, like. What was that that just happened sort of thing? What happened in the last 35 minutes? So, yeah, track listing is very important. I didn't think it was, but it is. It's really important. Yeah. Um, prior to lockdown, had you been rehearsing the songs to play live? We played the songs off and on over the last couple of years, actually. When we, when we get to play live, we will throw a couple of ones. And they're a bit raggedy. You know, they started off raggedy because the album hadn't been really... We will rehearse. Hopefully, the launch is in September. So, hopefully, we've got rehearsals for October. October, uh, October. August, we have rehearsals for the band for the for the launch in September on September the fourth in uh, the uh, Brunswick Club here in uh, Melbourne. And then we will have another one in October. I think it's a north and south thing. So we'll have another launch at the Mimo uh, in October. So we'll rehearse. Um, but we have been playing the songs off and on in various form uh, for the last year or a couple of years, or whenever we get to play. In, in these strange times, it's difficult to know when, you know, are we still going to have a launch? It's a, you can't plan too far ahead. Cam and I were supposed to play last weekend at the George in Fitzroy, in um, Fitzroy Street in St Kilda. I think it's the old CV ballroom. They call it the George. Uh, we've been we've been booked to play there since I had uh, uh, this operation in the back of my head here to remove one of these lesions on my brain um, in my, April. My, of course, we couldn't do that, so we put it to the seventeenth of July, the, the duo to play at the George, and we were so looking forward. We rehearsed uh, last week and the week before, and and I went to see a movie last. Thursday <clears throat> or the Thursday before whenever lockdown happened I went to see the Sparks Brothers that wonderful documentary on Sparks fantastic I re highly recommend it uh, it's a great doco and uh, I came out of that and it was like you're in lockdown again and then Cam rang and said uh, by the way the 17th of July has been cancelled or postponed until September ah oh, god so we don't know <laughs> it's in the Again, in the lap of the gods. Yeah. So, well, we you know, do know. Post along, look after each other, and you know. We do. We do know that the album "Do the Understanding" will be out on July twenty six. My birthday. Happy birthday for the day. Now, on my birthday, we thought that was a, my gift to everyone. <laughs> uh, Ron Espino, it's been great to chat. Thanks for joining us. Lovely, lovely chatting with you, Greg. Take care. Look after yourself. All right.